Okay, we're back on record. The time is 5.12, and this begins media four. Ms. McClure, I'm going to show you Exhibit 27, just so you understand. I know you looked at Exhibits 27 through 50 during the lunch break, but 27 through 50 are transcriptions that my staff did <coughs> for oral disclosures that you made from the dais. So what they did is they would put the hearing date, the agenda item number, the project name, the commissioner who made the disclosure, the time at which the disclosure appears in the video archives, and then they would type up what was disclosed by the commissioner. Uh, there may be some typos uh, for names and things of that sort, uh, but otherwise uh, they typed up what was said the way it appears on the video. Uh, so I'm going to ask you some questions about that. Looking at Exhibit 27, it's for a disclosure on September 12, 2013, Agenda Item 12A. Do you recognize that disclosure? Yes, I do. Uh, you gave that disclosure on September 12th of 2013, correct? Correct. And you were disclosing an ex parte communication that was two or three months earlier? Yes, because it had been a yes. Why were why did you wait so long to disclose that communication? Because that visit that I had with Caltrans, I didn't have it. I didn't have an application before me. When I met with them, I didn't realize that there was an was a a um, application coming forward in September. But in fact, there was an application on file at the time of your ex parte communication, correct? Unknown to me. Okay, so you don't know whether one was on file as you sit here today? Whether the application was on file? As you sit here right now, do you know whether this project had an application on file back in May of 2013? I don't know that answer. Okay. If it did have an application on file, would you agree that your disclosure was late? Yes. Well, oh. calls for speculation and a legal conclusion. If there was an application on file back in May of 2013, you agree that you would have had to do a written disclosure within seven days of the ex parte communication, correct? Hold on. I I, I think it's inappropriate for the witness to be applying the ex parte statute to try to determine what would be timely or untimely under a hypothetical set of circumstances being postulated by the question. So I'm going to instruct you not to answer. It's not hypothetical. If there was an application on file, you don't know, correct? I you do not know if there was an application right. on file. But if one was, on, and applications were normal things that people filed at the Coastal Commission, right? Applications are if 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 someone has has a complete a completed application for an item. I would not know that until it appeared on the agenda. Did you have an ex parte communication on this particular project in May or June of 2013? Yes or no? No. So why did you disclose it in September of 2013? I had a meeting in either May or June with Caltrans and I had no idea that it was an ex parte. Did you have a meeting with, who's HCOG? Humboldt County, um, it's their, it's their transportation group. It's the Humboldt County Association of Governments? Yes. So you met with representatives of Caltrans and HCOG? Correct. In May or June of 2013, correct? Correct. And the substance of the meeting concerned the same subject matter that was before you on September 12 of 2013? Correct. Okay. 
and prior to September 12 of 2013, you never disclosed that that conversation with anybody, correct? Correct, because I didn't know it was an ex parte. Do you have an understanding that you don't have to disclose a communication just because you don't think it's an ex parte? I don't understand what you're saying. Just because you think a communication isn't an ex parte in your mind, does that mean you don't have to disclose it? Correct. Okay, so if you are wrong about whether a communication is an ex parte, that's, you, you're, well, strike that. Are you sitting here telling me that you don't have to follow the ex parte rules if you don't believe that a communication is an ex parte? And that requires the witness to apply the ex parte statute and determine whether there's a violation under a presented set of circumstances. That's not what I asked her. Can you read my question to her again, please? Are you sitting here telling me that you don't have to follow the ex parte rules if you don't believe that a communication is an ex parte? Let me rephrase it. Are you sitting here telling me that you don't think you have to follow the ex parte rules if you don't think you're having an ex parte communication? I wouldn't know to apply the ex parte rules if it were a conversation. Well, if you were discussing the same subject matter at a meeting that came before you as a coastal commissioner, would you, why would you not know that that's an ex parte communication? That calls for speculation. It doesn't. I'm asking her. I'm asking you. If you know that you're covering the same subject matter as something before you as a commissioner, why would you not disclose it? When I met... I, I, hold on. Calls for speculation. If you're able to answer the question, you, you may. I didn't know it was an ex parte in May or June. Whenever. At what point did you learn it was an ex parte? When it arrived well, on... Uh, hold on. Uh, assumes facts not testified to. Well, you said you didn't know it was an ex parte in May or June, right? Correct. So at what point did you come to believe it was an ex parte? Uh, assumes facts. Well, did you ever come to believe that it was an ex parte? That's why I reported it on the mic. Great, yes. great. When did you come to that conclusion? When I read the application. Which was when? September, 10 days before the meeting, whenever that came out, or seven days, or whenever I got to that section of the agenda when I reviewed it. Well, how soon before the agenda, how soon before the meeting did that agenda come out? Isn't it usually 10 days it's before? It's usually you? 10 days. Okay. Um, does not mean that I read it all in 10 days. Okay. But once it was on the agenda, 10 days before the meeting, you should have known that it was an ex parte, correct? I, that, I, I think that does call for a legal conclusion of some kind. You can answer. I received the agenda 10 days before, but I can't tell you when I read the agenda how many days before um, that I realized that this should be recorded, and that's why I recorded it on the mic to disclose that meeting that I had no association with prior to that, that it would be an ex parte. Well, was, did this project concern something affecting you as a county supervisor? No, not my county. So do you have any idea why they'd even want to talk to you then, if it wasn't because you're a coastal commissioner? I don't. I, I, they spoke to me as a co coastal commissioner, but I didn't know the project had been an application and it was in route. How many people during your tenure would speak to you as a coastal commissioner without having a project in the pipeline? Many. Okay. So you were 
confused in May or June of 2013 about whether this was actually a project that would be coming before you? I did not have that information. It wasn't that I was confused. I didn't have the information. Did you, did you ask the people at the ex parte whether they'd ever be bringing anything before you? I don't recall that. I don't think so. Okay. Or it may have been that, yes, they're getting, a pr they're getting it together to bring something forward. Can I give you an example? Sure. Of I met with um, Coastal Commission staff and the uh, president of the university and they had ideas of things that they would like to do and they just talked about the ideas but none of those came to the dais. Well but the Coastal Commission staff was in those meetings, right? Correct. Okay, well those aren't ex parte communications, right? And I don't know if there may have okay, been... Okay, hold on. Please focus on the question you're being asked and answer the question you're being asked. Right, meetings with staff aren't ex parte communications, Correct. right? Correct. Okay. Was any staff in this meeting that you disclosed with Caltrans and HCOG? I don't recall. I'm going to show you Exhibit 28 for an October 9, 2013 disclosure on Agenda Item 11A. Correct. Who did you have a meeting with on October on October 4th at 4.30. I had a phone communication with all of the same people from Pera from Pepperdine that had been on the agenda, had been, uh, their names had been presented on the um, other commissioners' reports and Susan McCain. There was a group of people from Paradigm. So it was all one phone conversation? Correct. Okay. Take a look at Exhibit 29. Exhibit 29 is for October 11, 2013. Agenda Item 7A. Do you recognize that ex parte disclosure? Yes, I do. Did you do a written disclosure for your ex parte with Sarah Wan on October 1st? No, I didn't. So this disclosure was late? I believe that the date of the um, hearing is not correct. What, what's the date of the hearing that you believe? We would have to check the agenda, check the... But I believe it was probably in the 7-8 range, 5-6-7 or 7-8-9. In October, October 7 was a Monday. Of 2013. Of 2013. October 7 was a Monday. The hearing date was on October 11. That's a Friday. I, I think that, no, I think that, um, yeah, that would have been the same week. That was within seven days. Well, you said you had the ex parte on October 1st. That's the question. Yes. So, you, so that you correctly disclosed that you had an ex parte communication with Sarawan on October 1, correct? Correct. And you didn't make that disclosure until October 11th, correct? I believe that date is wrong. And what date do you think you made the disclosure on? I believe that it was the, the week of the 5th. Well, October 5th in 2013 was a Saturday. Well, it was that, between that week, I don't know. Maybe we should check the commission meeting date.
Okay, according to the Coastal Commission agenda that I'm looking at, and I'll show you my iPad right now. I can't see it from there, but I, I trust that you're reading I'll make it bigger. Friday, October 11, 2013, item 7A is application number 6-12-067 for the 22nd District Agricultural Association. Do you see that? Yes, I do. Okay. Does that help refresh your recollection as to whether October 11th was the date you made the disclosure? That would be the date I made the disclosure. Okay. So that disclosure was after the seven-day limit, correct? Correct. You know, I may have the wrong date on um, when I talked with Sara because I make reference that I, on the 4th, I had the phone communication and then on the 1st. Do you so have... I, I would have to go through my phone records. I don't think I can reach the back that far. Is there any reason to believe that you gave false information to the public when you were making that disclosure from the dais? No. Okay. Let me show you Exhibit 30. Exhibit 30 is for November 13, 2013. Item 19A. Correct. Do you recall this disclosure? Yes. You see down at the bottom, you, you said, and then just for the record, on back in April of 2013, I had met in Santa Barbara with Scott Maloney and Susan McCabe that is on record. And that was just an introduction to their briefing packet that they had given to the staff and it was my first introduction to anything about desalinization. Yeah, it was submitted. Do you see that? Yes. So that was in April of 2013, and this oral disclosure was in November of 2013, correct? I believe that it was also reported on April 2013, that it was in the record. Reported orally or in writing? Uh, I don't remember. Do you have any documents showing that it was reported in or orally or in writing back in April of 2013? I didn't go back that far in my records when I did the research. I only went through 15, so I, w I, could, I could find it probably. How would you go about finding it? I would probably call Susan McCabe and say, do you have a record of the April 2013? Because you don't keep records back in April of 2013? Correct. So you would call Susan? And I would probably also be able to go back and look at the video of April 2013, but like I say, I only went 15 because I thought that's what I needed. So if my office looks at the April 2013 video archives and can't find any oral disclosures from you discussing Scott Maloney and Susan McCabe on this project, would there be somewhere else we would go to find out whether you disclosed it? No. Okay. Would you agree that if you didn't disclose it orally or in writing back in April of 2013 that the November disclosure was late? No, because I think the concluding line on that says that I had submitted it. I said if it wasn't submitted. If you didn't submit anything in writing and you didn't orally disclose it, would you agree that the disclosure in November of 2013 was late? Calls for speculation. Yeah, I, I don't know because I don't have dates in my head like that. So well, you know that November is after April, right? Yes, I do. Okay. So if it turns out that there's no written disclosure, and if it turns out that there's no disclosure in April of 2013 video archives, would you then agree that this disclosure was late? We will stipulate that November is more than seven days after April. That's great, but that's not what I asked the witness. Would you agree that it's late under those? <clears throat> would you agree that it's late under those circumstances? Okay. 
It's a yes or no question. And I'll object that the term late in that question is vague and ambiguous. Are you talking about legally under the statute? Would you agree that if there's no written disclosure for the April 2013 ex parte communication, and if there's no record of the oral disclosure in the video archives, that your disclosure in November of 2013 was more than seven days after the ex parte communication in April of 2013? Yes or no? Yes. Okay. Let me show you Exhibit 31. Exhibit 31 is for disclosures on November 13 of 2013, item 23A. It states that on November 5th, I had a phone call with Sarawan. Do you see that? Mm -hmm. Yes? Yes. Do you have any reason to believe that you made a false statement when you said that you had a phone call with Sara on November 5th? Assumes facts, not in evidence. Did you have the phone call with Sarawan on November 5th? To the best of my recollection, yes. Okay. Do you recall doing a written disclosure for that ex parte with Sarawan? No. Do you understand that November 13 is more than seven days after November 5th? Yes. Let me show you Exhibit 32. Exhibit 32 is for a hearing on November 14 of 2013, Agenda Item 19A. Do you recognize that ex parte disclosure, ma'am? Yes. It states, on the 5th of November, I had a phone communication with Sara Wan and Don Kowanski. Do you see that? Yes. Did you have an ex parte communication with Sara and Don on November 5? I believe I did, to the best of my recollection. Okay. Did you do a written disclosure for this ex parte communication? No, I did not. And would you agree that November 14 is more than seven days after November 5? I think that possibly... It's a yes or no Yes question. or no. S ask it again. Would you agree that November 14 is more than seven days after November 5? Yes. Let me show you Exhibit 33 for a hearing on November 15, 2013, Agenda Item 21A. Do you recognize that disclosure, ma'am? Yes, I do. Did you have an ex parte communication with David Nish on November 6 of 2013? Yes. Would you agree that November 15 is more than seven days after November 6? Yes. Did you do a written disclosure for the ex parte that is described in Exhibit 33? No. I don't believe so. Let me show you Exhibit 34. It is an ex parte disclosure on March 13 of 2014 for agenda item number 11B. You recognize that ex parte disclosure, ma'am? Correct. States that you had an ex parte on March 5 with Claudia Vanzuela and Susan, whose last name is not stated. That's C L A U D I A and V A N. Z O E L A. That may be Venezuela, by the way, or Valenzuela. Anyway, do you recall that ex parte conversation? Yes. Did it occur on March 5? Yes. Would you agree that March 13 is more than seven days after March 5? Yes. Did you do a written ex parte disclosure for that no. ex parte? Please wait for him to finish the question. Did you do a written ex parte disclosure for that ex parte communication? No. Let me show you Exhibit 35. It is a disclosure on April 10 of 2014 for Agenda Item Number 9. Do you recognize that disclosure? Yes, but I believe it's incorrect that it should say Del Norte County. Okay. As opposed to Del Mar. Okay. When did you 
have that ex parte communication with John Mertis. I want to say it was on the Tuesday before the meeting. Is there a reason you didn't specify the date of the ex parte communication? No, because it was a quick um, conversation at the end of a Board of Supervisors meeting, I believe, where he just came up and said that, and I made sure it got to the record. Did you have an understanding on April 10 of 2014 that your ex parte disclosures required you to identify the date on which they occur? Yes, I did. Let me show you Exhibit 36. Exhibit 36 is a disclosure on October 10 of 2014. Agenda item number 17A. Do you recognize that disclosure? Yes. Did you have a phone conversation with Zadir Vlosky, that's Z-A-D-I-R-V-L-O-S-K-Y? Yes. On March 31st of 2014? Yes. Did you disclose that ex parte communication in writing? No. Would you agree that April 10 is more than seven days after March 31? Yes. Let me show you exhibit 37. Exhibit 37 is for a hearing on June 12 of 2014, agenda item number 9A. Do you recognize that disclosure? Yes. Did you have an ex parte communication on May 7th of 2014? Yes. And you did not forward it to the Coastal Commission, correct? Correct. You would agree that June 12 is more than seven days after May 7th? Correct. May I say something to that? Sure. I thought I had forwarded it, and then I found it in the draft box, and then it didn't get... F I, I thought I had sent it to Vanessa, and it was in my, in my drafts. So when did you send it to Vanessa? Uh, I don't have the data, but I did forward a hard copy to her. Did you forward it to her after June 12 of 2014? I believe I did. Okay. Let me show you exhibit 38. Exhibit 38 is for June 12, 2014, agenda item number 9A. Do you, did you have an ex parte communication with Joyce Perry? I did. On what date? Unknown at this time. Is there a reason you didn't state the date during your disclosure? I don't. I was at the dais, I thought I had given the time, and it looks a little um, awkward when I start out with, and we also at that time in that meeting, I, so I'm not sure, it seems like maybe part of my ex parte might be eliminated there or something. Okay. Doesn't, it doesn't make sense on how it reads. Perhaps it's possible my office didn't capture the full disclosure that you made and without the full context it doesn't make sense. Is that what you're saying? Correct. Okay, I understand. You would agree I remember have oh. you would agree that the date would need to be given as part of your ex parte disclosure, yes. is that correct? Correct. Okay. Let's take a look at exhibit thirty nine. 
It is for June 12 of 2014. Agenda item 9A. Do you recognize that ex parte disclosure? With yes. With Roberta Armstrong? Yes. Is there a reason you didn't provide date of the phone messages or emails? I didn't uh, respond to her emails or phone messages. I received them. Is there a reason you didn't specify the date on which you received them? I was just clarifying that I had re that I had received them, but other than that, I had no communication. But you were. That's how all of your ex partes were, right? You didn't ask questions. You just received information, correct? I, I got her her emails and voice messages for me to please call and make an appointment, and I did not respond. Well, didn't she say in the email messages and the phone messages that you not support the bridge project? Correct. That was in the header, I think. Okay. But you didn't think to disclose the date of those email messages or phone messages, right? I um, left it off. That's correct. Okay. Oh, well, you know, again, we could look at, I would okay. like to go back to the record because generally I say that. But on June 12 of 2014, you understood that a ex parte disclosure needed to have the date specified as well, correct? Correct. Okay. Take a look. Oh. Okay. Take a look at Exhibit 40. It is for June 12, 2014. Agenda item 14A. Do you recognize that ex parte disclosure? Yes. What did you mean when you wrote, when you said, we spoke about the question of, is there a need? What did that mean? For the, um, for the, it was to do an infill into a cave, and was that, it, was there a need to stabilize the bank to do that? Okay. Exhibit 41 is for September 10 of 2014, agenda item 9A. Do you recall that ex parte disclosure? Yes. Did you have an ex parte on file for that? Yes. Do you know whether it was in the agenda materials on the Coastal Commission's website for that meeting? That is unknown to me. Okay. We're in the home stretch. Exhibit 42, January 8, 2015, agenda item number 11A. Do you recognize that disclosure? Yes. Okay, do you see toward the bottom of the first page of Exhibit 42 where you state that you had an ex parte that's on file back in October? Yes. Do you know whether your ex parte was, in fact, on file? I know we have it in this pile of ex partes. Can you... Which one was it? This was the um, ranch property. The Laguna Ranch golf and bungalow. Have we looked at that written ex parte today? Yes, we have. On Exhibit Z, does that ex parte appear anywhere? On the 15th? In a, uh, this was 4-15? No, January. Is that the one? But it, it, apparently you had this in October of 2014. 
Yes, Laguna, the Laguna Beach course is one of those that went back and forth, that was withdrawn and pulled back, and I was re referencing a time in the tent in October 10 where I had met with the applicant I was at his property, which is in file there. So I'm looking in Exhibit A1. Those are the pages that you brought this morning. You should have yeah, a copy of it too, but I see in here an unsigned ex parte disclosure. the end. Is this it? Yes. Okay. So we're looking at Exhibit A1, the third and, to And last. this one has also been included in the stack that we've gone through. Okay. And so if the written disclosure described in Exhibit 42 was submitted on time, there will be a stamp or something on it. We, we looked at that earlier. Theoretically, too. I don't remember if there was a stack or if it presented just like this one okay. presented. Other than the exhibits we've looked at during today's deposition, you don't have any other evidence of when that written disclosure for October the 10th of 2014 on the ranch would have been submitted, correct? Correct. Take a look at Exhibit 43. For February 13 of 2015, Agenda Item 12B. You recognize that ex parte disclosure? Yes. When was that ex parte meeting that you were disclosing? I don't recall the date. Do you recall whether you gave the date at some time during your disclosures from the dais? Yes, I believe so. So you think that perhaps my staff just didn't get the full extent of your disclosure? Correct, and I think that your staff could find out the date of the, the disclosure because it was the same meeting with Commissioner Cox. Was the meeting and the same as Commissioner yes. Cox or the substance? I believe that we met together, but I don't, I don't, have, I don't have recollection. I can't yeah. really say that. Sorry. Is there something in this disclosure that would lead a listener to conclude that you and Commissioner Cox were in the same meeting? I believe so. What what part would give somebody that impression in your mind? That Commissioner Cox had already reported it out. You said, I turned in my ex parte in already to the staff, but it was the same as Commissioner Cox and the rest of the group and it's on file. Correct. Is there something in there that you think would, should prompt a listener to understand that you and Commissioner Cox were in the same meeting? I can't interpret what a listener would, would understand. Well, do you interpret those words to mean that you and yes. Commissioner Cox were in the same meeting? Yes. 
How long did the meeting last? I don't have any recollection. Where did it occur? I don't know that either. I would have to go back to that ex parte that was turned in. Who was present? I don't remember that either. Take a look at Exhibit 44. For a hearing on August 12 of 2015, agenda item 14A. You recognize that ex parte disclosure? Correct. Did you have an ex parte meeting with Sarawan and Fred Angel on August 3 of 2015? Yes. It was a phone conversation, I'm pretty sure. Would you agree that August 12 is more than seven days after August 3? Yes. Before I finish that answer, may I look at... Well, he's just asking you to compare the dates. You agree that August 12 is more than seven days after August 3, right? Correct. Did you do a written disclosure for this ex parte? Yes. Do you have it in your hand? I do. And may I see it? We have a copy already, too. This is an unsigned, undated written disclosure that is included in Exhibit A-1, correct? Correct. And you don't have it? No, any? not Exhibit A-1. It's... A-1 was mine. Yes, this was... I, this is one I found. Right. You're referring to the third page of Exhibit A-1. I don't have them numbered, so I assume that that's the right number. But this is the form that you think is the written disclosure is unsigned and undated, and it says name or description of the project, WED.14A, comma, appeal, A-4-MAL. Let me look at Keen just a second. Dash 15, dash 0042, left paren, Keen, comma, Malibu, right paren. Are we looking at the same document? Yes. And you don't have any evidence showing when that document was submitted to the Postal Department? I may very well. Just a moment, please. Because I know that one is listed on this list. Yes, and I have it as the, um, it was on the 11th, the hearing date, and I, my ex parte was on the 3rd, and I submitted it on the 11th. Was the hearing date on August 11 or August 12? I believe it was on August 11. You can double check that, thanks to modern technology. show you here. Just a minute. Okay. Let's look at the website together here on my iPad. August 12, 2015. Okay. Item 14A is for the Keen Malibu project, right? Correct. Okay, so does that help refresh your recollection as to whether it was in fact on August 12th? It, it, it clarifies the date of okay. the 12th as opposed to the 11th, but I was working off of the um, list that I was given and it, it, appear, it pointed me to the 10th. Okay. I mean to the, to the 11th. And again, you don't have any evidence showing when the written ex parte disclosure for this ex parte was submitted, correct? It would have been submitted because I submitted it by, uh, by on the mic, and it was in five hours and 41 minutes into the meeting. Right, but you submitted it from the dais 
11 days after the ex parte Correct. meeting. Correct. Please, please wait for him to finish the question. You submitted, you <coughs> made the oral disclosure 11 days after the ex parte, correct? Yes. And you don't have any written evidence showing when your written disclosure was received by the Coastal Commission, correct? Correct. I'm sorry, Corey, did you say 11 days? Was that what you intended to say? Let, let's do it again just to be safe. You agree that August 12 is nine days after August 3rd, correct? Correct. Okay. I'll take 44 from you. Sorry. If I misspoke, Joel, thank you for catching it. Okay. Exhibit 45 is for August 13 of 2015, agenda item 18A. Do you recognize that disclosure? Yes, I do. Did you have an ex parte with Anne, Anne Blemker, B-L-E-M-K-E-R, Susan McCabe, and Sherman Stacy, S-T-A-C-Y? Yes, I did. On August 5th of 2015? Yes. Did you do a written disclosure for that ex parte communication? No. Would you agree that August 13 is eight days after August 5? Correct. Exhibit 46, please take a look. It's for August 13 of 2015, agenda item 18B. Do you recognize that ex parte disclosure? Yes, I do. Did you have an ex parte conversation with Susan McCabe on August 5th? Yes, I did. Of 2015? Yes, I did. Did you do a written disclosure for that ex parte communication? No, I didn't. Would you agree that August 13 is more than seven days after August 5th? Correct. Let's take a look at Exhibit 47. Exhibit 47 is for August 13, agenda item 22D. Do you have an ex parte communication on August 5 with Ann Blumker, Susan McCabe, Steve Kaufman, Andrea Rossetti, Yuri Feldman, and Leslie Nashira? I don't remember this one. Of San Diego. What was the month again? August, August. 2015. I don't remember this one. It, it. Okay, if you don't remember, that's fine. Would you agree that August 5 is more than seven, sorry, would you agree that August 13 is more than seven days after August 5? Yes. Any reason to believe that you would have made a false statement on the dais when you disclosed this ex parte communication? No. Do you have any reason to believe that August 5 was, wasn't the date of the ex parte communication? No. Let's take a look at Exhibit 48, please. Exhibit 48 is for October 8th of 2015, Agenda Item 14A. Do you recognize this disclosure? Yes. Did you do any written disclosures for the ex parte communications described in Exhibit 48? I don't believe I did.
It's state you say, I also had about a three minute conversation with Jennifer Fearing, F-E-A-R-I-N-G, about the need to not have a breeding program at SeaWorld. Do you see that? Mm -hmm. Do you recall when you had that conversation with Ms. Fearing? That would have been at the meeting because she was just someone coming before we took it up on the dais. It was someone that talked to me about it. So that was on October 8th? Correct. Okay. Take a look at Exhibit 49 for November 15 of 2015, Agenda Item 19B. Do you recognize that ex parte disclosure, ma'am? Yes, I do. Did you do a written ex parte disclosure for this ex parte communication? Um, I don't believe so. Did you have an ex parte communication on October 28th of 2015 as described in Exhibit 49? Yes. Would you agree that November 15 is more than seven days after October 28th? I disagree that that was the meeting date. When do you think, sorry. I, I, I'm not sure that it was no. November 15th was the meeting Mr. date. Mr. Briggs just asking you for the math. Oh, I'm sorry. You're correct, and I'm wrong. That should say November 5. Everyone makes a mistake every now and again. Let me have your 49. I'm going to write on it November 5 and cross out the 15. Let's take a look at Exhibit 50. Exhibit 50. It's for April 13 of 2016, agenda item 17A. <laughs> Apparently Siri was reading one. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, exhibit 50, April 13, 2016, agenda item 17A. Does that document look familiar to you? Yes, Sorry. it does. Does the disclosure look familiar to you? Yes, it does. Did you do a written disclosure for the ex parte described in Exhibit 50? Yes, I did. Have we reviewed that ex parte today? I think it's in here. I had a handwritten um, ex parte from her that I reviewed and then signed. Okay, so you think that the ex parte described in Exhibit 50 was the subject of a written disclosure that you turned into the commission? Following my oral disclosure because okay. it was within the, within the seven days. Okay. So the written disclosure that you made for the ex parte described in Exhibit 50 was submitted after you disclosed it from the dais? Correct. Okay. Yeah, look, just, don't worry. Please just focus on his questions. Yeah. And you did have the ex parte communication on April 5th, as described in Correct. Exhibit 50? Yes? Yes. And would you agree that April 13 is more than seven days after Correct. April 5? Correct. Okay. Let's go off the record. We're going off record. The time is 6.07. 
Sorry. We're back on record. The time is 6.09. We had a discussion off the record. We're going to have the original sent to the court reporter's Crescent City office where the witness will have 45 days to review it, make any corrections to it, sign it under penalty of perjury. The original will be sent to my office uh, for all purposes of this litigation. I'll produce it upon prior uh, notice. Uh, a certified copy may be used in lieu of an original for any purpose of the case as well. So stipulated. Okay. Thank you, everybody. I have a question. You're going to send it to what office? Uh, PS Secretarial Service. And I can't take the document and no, read it? Yeah, you can read it there. Or your uh, your attorney can provide you a copy that you can review, and then you can sign it at PS Secretarial if you choose. Um, Mr. Briggs, do you want hard copy, electronic copy, or both? Electronic. Uh, I don't need hard copy. I need electronic. And can we get those two synced? Yes. That's standard deliverable. Awesome. Mr. Jacobs? I, all I need is an electronic copy, but I, actually, we probably should clarify. You said certified copy. Uh, can we just stip stipulate that a copy of the transcript, including a hard copy of the electronic copy that's provided? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, yeah, all I need is electronic. Okay. Do you want a, a copy of the video transcript? Uh, no, thank you. Okay, if you change your mind, call my office. Okay. okay. This concludes the I do. Uh, you need to talk to your attorney. We, we should, we'll, we'll talk about it, and I can place the order if yeah. that's something it's, we need to do. This concludes the deposition of Martha McClure. The time is 6.10, and this concludes media. Four.